Good morning dear students welcome to Jatin's Academy today in this class we are going to start with chapter number 2 that is motion of class 7th physics so in this class we are going to study about the different topics of chapter number 2 motion first topic is state of rest second is state of motion third types of motion then we will discuss about distance and displacement and then we will discuss about speed then at last mass and weight so these many topics today we are going to revise in this chapter number 2 that is motion so let us start with the first topic that is state of rest so first of all we should know clear difference between state of rest and state of motion so what do you mean by state of rest an object is said to be in state of rest when its position does not change with time and with respect to its surrounding see for example this book is laying on table and this book is not changing its position or book is moving here and there no book is not changing its position with respect to time as time is passing as time is passing with the passing of time this book is not changing its position with respect to time plus with respect to surrounding also book is on same place so you can say that book is in a state of rest similarly you can see this table also this table is also not changing its position this table is on same position no so table is also not changing its position with respect to time with respect to surrounding so this table is also in a state of rest then we are having this example of tree this tree is also on the same position same position of ground so that tree is also in a state of rest so next we are having definition of state of motion so what do you mean by state of motion an object is said to be in state of motion if it changes its position with respect to time and surrounding how for example this car is moving so this car is changing its position uh, firstly this is on this place then afterwards it go near to house afterwards it go near to this tree, trees and all so this car is changing its position with respect to time with respect to surrounding so whenever any object changes its position that object is said to be in a state of motion fine so next we are having rest and motion are relative terms what do you mean by relative terms relative term means rest and motion they both are dependent on each other how dependent on each other see carefully rest and motion are relative terms because it depends upon observer's frame of reference how it depend depends upon observer frame of reference see by taking an example for example you and your friend you both are sitting in a car okay for example you and your friend for example this is a car you and your friend you both are sitting in a car fine then according to your friend this is you this is your friend according to your friend you are in a state of rest because in car you are not moving here and there you in car you are sitting on one place fine but your car is moving and the person who is standing outside the car that person what he will say he will say that na you are in motion because according to this person you are changing your position with respect to time with respect to surrounding so according to this person you are in motion but according to your friend which is sitting near to you according to your friend you are in a state of rest so it all depends upon observer's frame of reference that what observer is watching that what observer is thinking so according to this observer you are in a motion but according to this observer you are in a state of rest so state of rest and motion they both are relative terms see for example this is a car in which you are sitting then afterwards one boy is standing near to your car so according to this boy you are in a state of motion but whatsoever your friend is sitting inside the car according to that friend you are in a state of rest so rest and motion they both are relative terms relative term means they both depend upon 
observer's frame of reference so here two observers are there one observer is standing outside your car and one observer is sitting with you inside your car next topic we are having here types of motion so here in this chapter we are going to learn about the different types of motion so their name is translatory motion rotatory motion oscillatory motion multiple or complex motion periodic motion non periodic motion so here we are going to discuss about these six types of motion plus this we are going to discuss about uniform and non uniform motion also fine so these motion we are going to discuss with their definitions with their appropriate examples also so first type of motion is translatory motion so see carefully what do you mean by translatory motion if an object moves on a hole from one place to another when this object is moving from one place to another for example this person is here this person is changing its position means in 5 o'clock he is standing here and at 5 10 he is standing here for example okay so when person moves on a hole his full body is only moving so person moves on a hole from one place to another place so that each part of it moves same distance in a given time each part of this body moves the same distance in a given time so that object is said to be in a translatory motion see this bicycle is moving from one place to another so this whole bicycle is moving na from one place to another and it is covering same distance in a given time so this bicycle or this boy is said to be in a translatory motion next we are having further translatory motion is of three types that is rectilinear motion curvilinear motion then we are having circular motion so here we are going to discuss about these three kinds of motion plus we will discuss what is the main difference between curvilinear and circular motion so first type of translatory motion we are having that is rectilinear motion what do you mean by rectilinear motion if an if the motion of an object is along a straight path when object is moving in a straight path then that object means is in which motion it is in rectilinear motion see this example also this cat is moving in a straight direction so when any object is moving along a straight path so that object's motion is which motion yes it is rectilinear motion next we are having curvilinear motion what do you mean by curvilinear motion if the motion of an object is along a curved path see this train is going to move in this curved path so when object is moving along a curved path that object is said to be in a state of curvilinear motion okay curvilinear motion means when a motion of an object is along a curved path that is a curvilinear motion next we are having circular motion so what do you mean by circular motion circular motion is also a special case of curvilinear motion only but in a circular motion object moves in a circular path but about a fixed point of axis so actually what is the main difference between circular and curvilinear firstly see what is circular motion in circular motion for example this is a fixed point around this fixed point this for example this boy is running like this around this fixed boy around this fixed point this boy is running like this in a circular motion so this kind of motion in which object is moving along a circular path but about a fixed point about this point only he is moving na he is running in circular path so this is known as circular motion but what do you mean by curvilinear motion in curvilinear motion simply object is going in curve means in curvilinear motion no fixed point is there here in circular motion one fixed point is there no but in curvilinear motion no fixed point is there so curvilinear motion this is the main difference between curvilinear motion and circular motion second main difference is this circular motion repeat itself it is repetitive in nature circular motion is always repetitive in nature it is also repeating from time to time it is repeating like this but curvilinear is non repetitive in nature fine this is the main difference 
so next we are having see for example this car is moving along this fixed point this is a fixed point along which this car is moving so this car is showing which motion circular motion okay next we are having next kind of motion next kind of motion that is rotatory motion so what do you mean by rotatory motion if an object moves about a fixed axis or a fixed point but without changing its position on a whole see here this object is not changing actually its position this swing is on its like same position only na like car is firstly here in circular motion in circular motion firstly car is here then car full fledge is changing its position but here in rotatory motion it is also in a like a circular path only but here they are not going to change its position here object is also going to move about a fixed path only but here object is not changing its position on a whole object is moving on on a same like path only same area only same position only so when object does not changes its position on a whole but it is moving about a fixed axis or fixed point that is known as rotatory motion next type of motion we are having oscillatory motion so what do you mean by oscillatory motion if an object moves to and fro about its mean position how to and fro see this girl is moving to and fro like this to and fro motion is like this when object is moving like this like this or object is moving like this this motion of an object is known as to and fro motion so this is a oscillatory motion when object is moving to and fro about its mean position mean starting from here till here so in mean position she is performing she is moving to and fro so that motion is known as oscillatory motion next example see this pendulum when this ball is moving along its mean position about its mean position and object is moving to and fro so what do you mean by oscillatory motion when object is moving to and fro about its mean position so that object is known as in oscillatory motion next we are having vibratory motion so what do you mean by vibratory motion the motion of an object in which only a part of the object move to and fro about its mean position while the remaining object remain at rest see for example here i am having a guitar in this guitar when we pluck the strings this strings will only move to and fro these strings are only going to show vibration but full fledged guitar is on rest only so that type of motion in which like few part of the object is in vibratory motion or few part of the object is showing to and fro motion about its mean position while the remaining object is in the rest so that type of motion is known as vibratory motion for example beating of this membrane of drum when you will beat the membrane of drum membrane means this white portion so when you will beat the membrane of drum only the membrane of drum will show to and fro motion but rest of the drum is in rest only so this kind of motion is known as vibratory motion next we are having multiple or complex motion so what do you mean by multiple or complex motion when an object simultaneously show a combination of two or more type of motion means when one object is showing two or more types of motion for example this biker is moving in a straight line due to the movement in straight line which motion is there yes it is rectilinear motion so when biker is moving in a straight line their rectilinear motion is there plus these wheels of the car wheels of sorry wheels of this wheel of this motorcycle they are also rotating about the fixed position no? so that is known as rotatory motion so this biker is showing two or more kinds of motion that is it is showing rectilinear motion also rotatory motion also so when one object is showing the combination of two or more type of motion then this combination of motion is known as multiple or complex motion any other example you can see for example this drilling machine this drilling machine is going downside also means rectilinear motion plus it is rotating also this machine is rotating also so that machine is in the rotatory motion also so when one object one this drill machine 
is showing two kinds of motion at the same time that combination of motions is known as multiple or complex motion next we are having random motion as a name suggests random random means when an object is not having its specific or particular path specific means particular path when a object is not having its particular path and frequently changes its motion like this b see this insect is randomly moving here and there means this insect is not showing a single type of motion firstly is she is coming here then going back so when object is not having a specific path and frequently changes its motion like this kite kite so kite is also not having its particular path so it is also changing its motion so that kind of motion is known as random or irregular motion fine next we are having periodic motion what do you mean by periodic motion when a motion repeats itself again and again after a fixed interval of time when a motion is repeating itself means for example this hands of the clock these hands of the clocks are changing or repeating its motion again and again after fixed interval of time na? like firstly 3 o'clock then afterwards also after 12 hours then again 3 o'clock then again 3 o'clock hands of the clock is also means repeating itself again and again so that motion in which object or in which object is showing a motion which is repeating again and again after a fixed interval of time that motion is known as periodic motion for example rotation of the moon around the sun so rotation of moon around sorry earth rotation of moon around the earth is also a periodic motion which is repeating itself after a regular intervals of time fine next we are having non periodic motion so what do you mean by non periodic motion when a motion does not repeat itself after a regular intervals of time for example this biker is here on this road but after one hour after two hour again he will come here only no so when a motion does not repeat itself again and again after fixed intervals of time so that motion is non periodic motion like in a case of hands of clock it is obvious it is sure that hands of clock will again come to their position after fixed intervals of time that is why it is a periodic motion but here in non periodic motion object does not repeat its motion after fixed regular intervals of time so that motion is known as non periodic motion say this movement of cat firstly cat is there in your house okay today she came but tomorrow it is sure she will come again or day after tomorrow sure it will come again no so when object does not repeat itself after regular intervals of time that motion is a non periodic motion next we are having uniform motion so what do you mean by uniform motion a motion of an moving object is said to be uniform if it covers equal distance in equal intervals of time how for example see this example first this car is moving then again it come to this point afterward this come to the last point here fine so what is happening here firstly car is there on this point where distance is zero time is zero means car has to start at this point where distance is zero time is zero so after 5 second car covers 20 meter after 5 seconds this car covers 20 meter again after 5 minutes see here 5 second is there then 10 second is there what is the gap between these two times gap is 10 second minus 5 second that is gap is of 5 second so after again 5 second it covers how much distance again you can see distance here is 40 meter here distance is 20 meter so it covers how much distance 20 meter again so when object is moving same distance in equal intervals of time here here also you can see when car is at 0 second in 5 second it reaches at point b this is point a this is point b this is point c in 5 second it reached at point b and how much it covered it covered 20 meter fine so here in 5 second from a to b in 5 second car covered 20 meter again from b to c it takes 5 second only to cover 20 meter so when object is moving and object is cover equal distance in equal intervals of time 
that motion is known as uniform motion clear might be this is clear to you when object is moving when object is covering equal distance in equal intervals of time that is known as uniform motion but uniform motion always takes place along a straight path fine next we are having non uniform motion <laughs> so what do you mean by non uniform motion the motion of an object is said to be non uniform if it covers unequal distance in equal intervals of time unequal distance see for example this car is firstly here then it comes toward point b finally it comes toward point c uh, it is coming toward point c now yes so now let us see here from point a b then point c from point a to point b how much time it covers here it is 0 second here it is 5 second so what is the time covered here 5 second here it is 0 meter here 30 meter so here it covered 30 meter so this car covers 30 meter in 5 second now see from point b to point c from point b to point c how much time it took 5 second to 10 second means how much gap 5 second gap then it covers 30 meter to 50 meter how much distance it covered that is 20 meter now you can see in 5 second firstly car is covering 30 meter then again in 5 second but now it is covering 20 meter might be in between traffic is there that is why distance covered is less so non uniform motion means when object covers unequal distance in equal intervals of time actually time is equal only but here distance is unequal so it is known as non uniform motion next we are having distance or path length so what do you mean by distance the actual length or the path covered by a moving object is known as distance whatsoever is a actual path now this boy wants to go from this point from this point a to at last point b so whatsoever distance this boy is going to cover that distance is known as path length or distance this actual length whatsoever this actual length is covered by a, by this boy that is known as its distance fine next we are having displacement what do you mean by displacement i will give you one simple example for example this is a path this path is having point a b c d fine here one boy is standing boy wants to go from point a towards point d so how he can move from point a to point d two methods are there firstly he can go from point a to point b then he can move from point b to point c afterwards from point c then finally at point d this is the first method so in this first method actually he has covered actual path full distance he has covered actual path he has covered so that is known as distance traveled by him this boy in this case has covered distance but second method is also there in order to reach from point a to point d directly he can come from point a to point d like this shortcut he can take or no so this total length covered by a body is a distance and the shortest length covered by a moving object is known as displacement this is the main difference between distance and displacement now see how this boy will move from here so without going yeah so without going to this way he is directly going in a straight way so he is covering the shortest length so it is the actual main difference between the distance and displacement so next we are having one numerical related to the distance calculate the total distance of this path for example this boy is standing here at point a he wants to go till point a again firstly standing at point a he wants to go again at point a so how he will move firstly he will go from point a to point b from point a to point b how much distance 40 meter plus then from point b to point c 30 meter then from c to d 40 meter then again from d to a that is 30 meter so how much distance he has covered 4 plus 4 8 that is 80 meter plus 
थ्री प्लस थ्री दैट इज सिक्सटी थर्टी प्लस थर्टी दैट इज सिक्सटी सो हाउ मच डिस्टेंस ही हैज कवर्ड वन फोर्टी मीटर सो दिस इज अ टोटल डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड बाय अ ऑब्जेक्ट ओके सो नेक्स्ट वी आर हैविंग डिस्टेंस इज अ स्केलर क्वांटिटी नाउ वी विल सी दैट वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्केलर एंड वैक्टर क्वांटिटी फर्स्टली आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्केलर एंड वैक्टर क्वांटिटी सो वॉट इज स्केलर क्वांटिटी स्केलर क्वांटिटी इज दैट क्वांटिटी विच इज हैविंग ओनली मैग्नीट्यूड स्केलर क्वांटिटी इज अ क्वांटिटी दैट इज हैविंग मैग्नीट्यूड बट नो डायरेक्शन हेयर इन स्केलर क्वांटिटी वी विल नॉट बॉदर अबाउट डायरेक्शन वी विल ओनली सी द मैग्नीट्यूड मैग्नीट्यूड मीन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल लाइक अ बॉय कवर्स फोर्टी मीटर अ बॉय कवर्स फोर्टी मीटर हेयर मैग्नीट्यूड इज फोर्टी How much distance he has covered? Forty meter. So magnitude we are watching, but in which direction he has moved? That is not our tension. Okay. So in scalar quantity we are only checking magnitude, but no direction. But in the vector quantity we are checking both. We are taking care of both things about magnitude as well as direction. So what do you mean by scalar quantities? Scalar quantities are the quantities in which magnitude we are watching. in which there is a magnitude but no direction but in a vector quantity there is magnitude as well as direction so now we will do distance is a scalar quantity distance is a scalar quantity means in distance we will only take tension of magnitude we will not see the direction that in which direction that boy moved that is not our problem so we will see only magnitude distance covered is the total path length of motion is independent of direction of motion so distance will not dependent upon motion Dis, uh, distance will not take care of the direction distance will only take care of the magnitude so here we are having pictorial representation if body wants to move from point a to point b so this is a actual path firstly he will go here then here at last point b so this is a actual path covered by a body and this is the shortest path that is a displacement covered by a body here distance is a scalar quantity but displacement is a vector quantity vector quantity means in which we are watching both magnitude in which we are bothering about both magnitude also plus direction also okay at which direction he is going in which direction from point a to point b obviously he has to go this direction only if he will go to back side how he will reach to point b fine so displacement is a vector quantity and distance is a scalar quantity so next we are having speed of a moving object so what do you mean by speed of a moving object distance covered by a moving object in unit time how much distance object has covered in how much time for example this is a object so this much distance that object has to cover in a time in particular time so that distance over time will give you speed so distance covered by a moving object per unit time is known as its speed speed is equals to distance over time now we are having si unit of speed we are going to calculate the si unit of speed so we know here si unit of distance firstly we will see the si unit of distance so si unit distance is what meter and si unit of time is second okay so we will see firstly si unit of distance then we will see si unit of time so now the si unit of speed is meter per second you can write like this also you can write like this also so si unit of speed is si unit of speed is meter per second fine next we are having speedometer might be you have seen this kind of instrument installed in our like uh, activas or installed in our car so what do the uh, what do you mean by the speedometer speedometer is a fitted in car as well as in motor bikes actually speedometer is a device that is used in a car or bike to check the speed of a car speed of the running car at a particular instant of time so speedometer is fit in the car as well as motor bike and it measures the speed of car or bike at particular instant of 
टाइम लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम राइडिंग माई एक्टिवा एंड आई वॉन्ट टू सी एट वॉट स्पीड आई एम गोइंग सो टू चेक इन ऑर्डर टू चेक एट वॉट स्पीड आई एम गोइंग आई विल सी द स्पीडोमीटर सो स्पीडोमीटर विल गिव मी द रीडिंग दैट एट वॉट स्पीड माई एक्टिवा इज गोइंग फाइन हाउ टू कैलकुलेट स्पीड सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द फॉर्मूला ऑफ स्पीड दैट इज स्पीड इज इक्वल्स टू डिस्टेंस अपॉन टाइम सो बाई दिस फॉर्मूला वी कैन ईजिली कैलकुलेट द स्पीड फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस कार इज फर्स्टली ऑन पॉइंट ए आफ्टरवर्ड्स इट मूव्स टू वर्ड पॉइंट बी देन अगेन इट मूव्स टू वर्ड पॉइंट सी सो एट दिस पॉइंट सी आई वॉन्ट टू चेक दैट वॉट इज द स्पीड ऑफ दिस कार फाइन सो वट इज द स्पीड एक्चुअली स्पीड इज डिस्टेंस ओवर टाइम हाउ मच डिस्टेंस दिस कार हैज कवर्ड सो दिस कार हैज कवर्ड फोर्टी मीटर इन हाउ मच टाइम इन टेन सेकेंड इट हैज कवर्ड फोर्टी मीटर सो वॉट डू मीन बाई स्पीड स्पीड इक्वल्स टू डिस्टेंस डिस्टेंस दैट इज फोर्टी अपॉन टाइम टाइम इज टेन सो स्पीड ऑफ दिस कार इज फोर मीटर पर सेकेंड क्लियर स्पीड ऑफ दिस कार इज फोर मीटर पर सेकेंड वन थिंग मोर इन दिस स्पीड टॉपिक हेयर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एस आई यूनिट ऑफ स्पीड हेयर आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू अबाउट द सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ स्पीड ऑल्सो सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ स्पीड सो सी हाउ टू कैलकुलेट सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ स्पीड वी नो स्पीड इक्वल्स टू डिस्टेंस अपॉन टाइम फाइन सो हेयर डिस्टेंस इज वट इन सी जी एस एक्चुअली वी आर हैविंग सी मीन्स सेंटीमीटर जी मीन्स ग्राम एंड एस मीन्स सेकेंड एस मीन्स सेकेंड ओके सो हेयर वी वॉन्ट टू चेक द सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ स्पीड सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ स्पीड सो टेल मी वट इज द सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ डिस्टेंस सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ डिस्टेंस इज सेंटीमीटर एंड सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ टाइम इज सेकेंड सो सी जी एस यूनिट ऑफ स्पीड इज सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड वॉट इज द एस आई यूनिट मीटर पर सेकेंड वॉट इज द सी जी एस यूनिट सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड फाइन so this we have already done next we are going to start with the next topic that is average speed so what do you mean by average speed actually whenever we are riding our activa we are on our car the speed is not same or we are not covering same distance in same time why due to might be some traffic conditions we are not able to cover same distance so sometimes speed is going to vary varies means changing from speed is going to change from position to position depending upon traffic conditions so in this situation we are not going to see the speed in this situation we are going to see the average speed fine so here for example see due to this traffic and all this these all cars are not having their same speed so their speed is varying from position to position that is known as its average speed now see the formula for average speed as we have learned for the speed speed is equals to distance upon time now we will see the formula for average speed average speed is equals to total distance traveled over total time taken for example firstly this car is here it took for example 5 seconds for 10 meter then it took again 5 second for example 25 meter due to no traffic condition it going to cover more distance so accordingly we are to see the different changing of the distance and different time taken okay so we will do one numerical also related to this so example first we are having an athlete covered a distance of 100 meter in 10 second so athlete covered distance of 100 meter so here we are given with distance distance we have given 100 meter time given is time taken is given that is 10 second so simply we have to calculate the speed so might be as you are knowing what is the formula for speed speed formula is speed is equals to distance over time distance traveled over total time taken so what do you mean by distance over time distance is given to us 100 meter what is the time given 10 second so simply solve it it will give you 10 meter per second this is zero you can cut with this zero so it is 10 meter per second as a speed next we are having robert is driving his motorbike on a straight highway 
सो वन रॉबर्ट नेम इज़ देयर वन बॉय इज़ देयर हु इज़ ड्राइविंग हिज मोटर बाइक ऑन अ स्ट्रेट हाईवे इफ ही कवर्स थर्टी किलोमीटर इन फर्स्ट आर सो वॉट डू मीन बाई वट इज गिवन टू अस फर्स्ट थर्टी किलोमीटर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इज अ स्ट्रेट रोड इन फर्स्ट आर ही इज कवरिंग थर्टी किलोमीटर देन इन द सेकेंड आर अगेन इन वन आर ही इज कवरिंग फिफ्टी किलोमीटर देन अगेन इन वन आर इन थर्ड आर ही इज कवरिंग एटी फाइव किलोमीटर एक्चुअली इट इज गिवन टू अस सो डिस्टेंस कवर्ड बाई रॉबर्ट इन थ्री कॉन्जिक्यूटिव आर्स आर फर्स्ट डिस्टेंस इज गिवन थर्टी किलोमीटर सेकेंड डिस्टेंस इज गिवन फिफ्टी थर्ड इज गिवन एटी फाइव so we will firstly find the total distance covered so total distance covered is plus all these three distance it will give you 165 km then afterwards we have to see the formula so formula of average speed is total distance over total time so what is the total distance total distance is 165 km over total time taken total time taken is what 1 hour 1 hour 1 hour 1 hour Plus one hour plus one hour, so it will give you three hours. Fine. Now next C, so it will give you one sixty five over three. Then after solving, you will get fifty five kilometer per hour. Fine. This is a speed covered by a robot. Now see this kilometer per hour. Kilometer per hour is also a unit of speed, but kilometer per hour is the bigger unit for speed. Kilometer per hour is the bigger unit of speed, and meter per second is the SI unit of speed. Fine. So, like this, you can solve the numericals related to average speed or related to speed. Next topic we are having here: weight of an object. So, what do you mean by weight of an object? The weight of an object is the force with which Earth attracts it. For example, here I am having one ball. when i will throw this ball okay when i will throw this ball from height so where this ball will go obviously it will go downside or it will move upward no when we will throw the ball this ball will move downside so each and everything we are knowing that each and everything is going towards the center of the earth or each and everything is attracting towards the earth by which force it is attracting toward the earth this is force of gravitation or gravitational force in a same way in a similar manner each and every body when attracted toward the surface of earth that force is nothing but is a weight of an object means the force by which this object is attracting towards the earth that force is nothing but a weight of an object so might be what is weight it is clear to you you can see here mass also what do you mean by mass side by side i will tell you what do you mean by weight afterwards we are having one difference between mass and weight from there you can note it down but still here i want to explain you so what do you mean by mass mass means quantity of matter contained in a substance how for example this one substance i am having so in this substance how much quantity of matter is contained matter means as we know each and every matter is made up of atoms or molecule so in this material also mass is a quantity of matter contained in a substance in this substance how much matter is contained that quantity of matter will give you mass fine what do you mean by weight weight i already told you each and every object is going to attract towards the surface of earth with some force and that force is nothing but a weight of an object this is the main difference between the mass and weight actually these are the definitions related to mass and weight see this is a weight when we are measuring it is giving us the weight next we are having weight of an object is the force of gravity experienced by an object this i already told you whatsoever object is going towards the surface of earth or falling down that all objects are having some gravitational force and that force is nothing but a weight of an object now we are having weight is a vector quantity vector quantity as i already told you in vector quantity we are going to see magnitude 
in vector quantity we are going to see magnitude as well as we are going to see the direction so weight is also a vector quantity in which we will see magnitude we will see direction for example weight is 5 newton so here 5 5 means magnitude 5 is also important direction also weight is applying downside or it is moving upside against the gravity so that is also important so weight is a vector quantity but mass is a scalar quantity in mass we need not any like direction why for example in this matter in this substance these matter particles are there so these matter particles are arranged in which direction it is important for you no so in this only quantity is important or only magnitude is important in mass only magnitude is important but no direction is important so mass is a scalar quantity mass is a scalar quantity and weight is a vector quantity fine if m is a mass of an object g is the acceleration due to gravity now we are going to do the relation between mass and weight this is a relation between mass and weight weight of an object is equals to mass multiply gravitational force that is g and this g value this gravitational force or gravity value is always constant that is 9.8 meter per second square this value is always constant this only value we have to put or in sometime books it is given 10 meter per second also meter per second square also so this also we can take but actually it is 9.8 so this is a relation between weight and mass as the value of g varies from place to place actually the value of g gravity changes from place to place as i told 9.8 meter per second square this is a value of g on the surface of earth this is the value of g on the surface of earth but when we will go on the surface of moon their value of gravity is different their gravity is less na? so their gravity is different so gravity changes from place to place as gravity changes from place to place so weight of an object also changes from place to place fine next we are having si unit of weight so si unit of weight is what si unit of weight is newton other units of weight which we are going to commonly use so other units of weight are kilogram force next we are having kilogram weight so this is the main difference between mass and weight first difference is mass is the quantity of matter contained in a substance mass means what mass is a quantity of matter contained in a substance what do you mean by weight weight is a force with which an object is attracted toward its center of earth when object is attracting toward the center of earth that is known as that force is known as weight mass is a constant quantity and independent of place mass is a constant means mass is not going to change from place to place okay but weight can vary from place to place weight we can change like for example on the surface of earth weight is different and on the surface of moon due to change in the value of g or gravity the weight is going to change s a unit of mass is kilogram s a unit of mass is kilogram and s a unit of weight is newton actually weight is what weight is a force only and force s a unit is newton similarly weight s a unit is also newton mass is measured by beam balance beam balance might be you have seen this kind of thing like this two pans are there here string is there these two strings are there so this is a beam balance and weight is measured by spring balance in the next slide i am going to show you spring balance also so mass is a scalar quantity which is only depending upon magnitude but no direction is important weight is a vector quantity in which both magnitude as well as direction is important mass of an object can never be zero mass can never be zero why because in matter some quantity of matter should be there no in any substance any quantity of matter is always there so mass of an object can never be zero but weight of an object can be zero where it can be zero in a gravity free space gravity where there is no gravity where there is zero gravity so in that places weight can be zero okay 
सो नेक्स्ट वी आर हैविंग रिलेशन बिटवीन डिफरेंट यूनिट्स ऑफ वेट एज वी हैव लर्न एस यूनिट ऑफ वेट दैट इज न्यूटन आफ्टरवर्ड्स वी हैव लर्न किलोग्राम फोर्स और किलोग्राम वेट सो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सी द रिलेशन बिटवीन डिफरेंट यूनिट्स ऑफ वेट सो फर्स्ट इज वी आर हैविंग रिलेशन बिटवीन किलोग्राम फोर्स एंड किलोग्राम वेट वन किलोग्राम फोर्स इज इक्वल्स टू वन किलोग्राम वेट मीन्स किलोग्राम फोर्स एंड किलोग्राम वेट दे बोथ आर सेम ओनली किलोग्राम किलोग्राम सेम ओनली हेयर फोर्स इज नथिंग बट अ वेट ओनली सो वन किलोग्राम फोर्स इज इक्वल्स टू वन किलोग्राम वेट एंड दे बोथ इक्वल्स टू नाइन पॉइंट एट न्यूटन इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दे कैन आस्क लाइक दिस लाइक वन किलोग्राम फोर्स इज इक्वल्स टू डैश न्यूटन so in dash how many newton 9.8 newton or they can ask 1 kg weight equals to dash newton that is 9.8 newton this is the relation between kg force and newton plus it is a relation between kg weight and newton next we are having sub multiple of kg force is gram force if we will see the sub multiple or the smaller unit for the weight that is gram force or gram weight so some multiples of weight are gram force and gram weight so relation is 1 kg force is equals to 1 kg sorry 1 gram force is equals to 1 gram weight gram gram same force is nothing but a weight so 1 kilo 1 gram force is equals to 1 gram weight fine 1 gram force is equals to 1 by 1000 kg force <clears throat> here how it comes here actually 1 gram force is there in 1 gram as we know how many kg are there in 1 gram 1 by 1000 grams are there so 1 gram force is equals to 1 by 1000 kg force is same so this is the relation between kg force and gram force fine next we are having weight of an object is maximum on earth surface but decreases as one goes on height for example this is the earth surface this is the earth when we talk about the earth surface surface means this full part in between the earth this full part in this full part weight is maximum weight is there but as an object is going on some height this object is going on some height when any object is going on some height at that case weight is going to decrease at that this case weight is going to decrease but when object is there on the moon surface their object weight is maximum okay on earth surface weight is maximum at its poles poles means this one this is also pole this is also pole here also pole here also pole four poles are there okay so gravity uh, weight is maximum at the poles and minimum at the equator this is equator central line so at the equator weight is minimum and at the poles great uh, weight is maximum fine now we are having some more knowledge the force of the earth's attraction is termed as gravity this we have already learned that whatever force by which object is going towards the earth that force is nothing but a gravity and this gravity varies from height to height or depth to depth fine as i already told when we will go up the height when we will go above the surface of earth their weight decreases but on the surface weight will be maximum so next we are having like this each and every object is going towards the surface of earth so this object is also going toward the surface of earth and at some height it is moving down side due to the gravity or the weight is there next we are having gravitational force on moon is 1 by 6th of gravitational force on earth what does it means for example on earth on earth my weight is 60 newton on earth surface my weight is 60 newton but when i will go on moon surface there it will be 1 by 6th only 1 by 6 of weight of earth if i am having here on earth 60 newton force and i will go on the surface of moon then my weight will decreases to see here 60 value put here 6 tens are 60 so there my weight is only 10 newton so 
what does it means gravitational force on moon is 1 by 6 of gravitational force on earth fine so if you want to calculate here it will be uh, like this you can write sorry gravitational force on moon is 1 by 6 of gravitational force of earth this you can write gravitational force on moon is 1 by 6 of gravitational force on the earth surface fine like on the earth surface our gravity is going to reduce gravity reduce means weight is also going to reduce next we are having measurement of weight so weight we are going to measure by using spring balance in the difference as i told you told you that mass we are going to measure by the beam balance this is a beam balance and weight we are going to measure by the spring balance this is a spring balance in which here one spring is tied okay one spring is tied when we when we will tie here one weight so this spring will elongate when this spring will elongate it will give you the reading of the measurement of weight so this is all about your chapter number 2 that is motion so if you like the explanation please share it subscribe our youtube channel thank you so much